Thanks for catching this Nonsense Password special episode. This piece I produced a while back, remembering an event that occurred here at my house. And I'm not sure that I ever published it. I may have published it on a compilation episode that was only up for a week or two. So I decided to publish it again as a standalone episode. It's just one of those things that happened to me. One of those things that happened to me, it seems, at a greater frequency than to other people. And it's just a remembrance of that. I'm kind of a shit magnet. I actually have a guy who trains the police here who knows me. I helped him get that job. And he told me I should be a cop because I'm a shit magnet. My arrest record would be ridiculous. But I said, nah, it'd probably be terrible because there's very few things that I would actually arrest people for. But anyway, here is the piece. I call it Just Me and My Angels. So I went to lunch the other day and when I got back, I asked my coworker who was new there if I'd missed anything. And she said to me, well, there is a 14-year-old boy over there asking to buy cigarettes from people for a dollar. And I said, do you think he's still over there? And she said, yes. So I went over there, and I looked, and I didn't see any 14-year-old boys. So I went back to her, and I said, I don't see anybody over there. And after a few moments of minding my own business and minding my duties, she said to me, there he is. And I looked over, and I recognized that person. And I said, that isn't a 14-year-old boy. That is a woman in her 20s. I know because she broke into my house about three years ago. On that night, it was very late, very, very late, probably between three and four in the morning, and I was doing what I'm doing now, talking to a microphone and probably nobody else, when all of a sudden, over my earphones came all this commotion and a bunch of feminine swearing, and I thought to myself, it's very unlike my wife to be throwing fits between three and four o'clock in the morning, but women are mysterious sometimes. So I waited a moment, and I heard all the stomping and the slamming doors, and then things settled for a moment, and I thought I should probably go check on her. So I got up, and the light was on in the bathroom, and I could hear voices in the bathroom. And I wondered, is there somebody here? Did somebody show up at my house between 3 and 4 in the morning, and my wife's in the bathroom with them? I wonder what they're doing. So I stood there for a moment, and I listened, and I heard a voice, a female voice, and then I heard other voices that were hard to pick out. And I don't know why, but I became suspicious that whoever was in my bathroom was in fact not my wife. So quietly, I sneaked into our bedroom, and in the pitch dark, I felt where she would most likely be laying, and my fingers touched her face much like a tarantula would if it had jumped on it. She's a very deep sleeper, and generally a very pleasant awakener. And she said, what? And I said, be quiet, don't move, there's somebody in our house. So I grabbed a baseball bat, an aluminum bat, and I waited outside that bathroom door, considering whether or not I should get a knife, or perhaps the shotgun. But, 
being that the door opened to the inside and would act as a shield, and I could open the door whenever I wanted and control it however I wanted, and I could bludgeon anybody with hard down strokes, the bathroom could be full of people, and I could bludgeon them to death before they could do anything. So I sat outside that bathroom door, and I waited and I listened, and the conversation that occurred seemed hushed and sneaky, and it didn't really make all that much sense to me. So I waited, and I waited, and after a moment, I gently knocked on the door. My own bathroom door. At about four o'clock in the morning. And I said, Hello. I don't mean to be rude or to interrupt, but I wasn't expecting any house guests at this hour. How may I help you? And she said, inside, in my bathroom, I could tell from my toilet, Oh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be any trouble. It's just, I've been constipated for so long, and now I'm not constipated anymore, and, you know, I just needed somewhere to go, and, you know, you, you look like the only place that was open, and so I, I, I just let myself in. And I said, well, I didn't really want to give the appearance that I'm open. I mean, most of the lights are off, and there was a very heavy discarded sink in front of that door that you had to move, and then you had to open a screen door that was locked um, by brute force. Uh, but, uh, you know, I understand how how things like that can happen. Hey, let me ask you a question. How many people are in that bathroom with you? And she said, oh, it's just me and my angels. And I said, your angels? And she said, yeah, there won't be any trouble. And I said, how many, how many people total? And she said, it's just me. You can look if you want. And I said, well, you know, I don't know what's going on in there, and I'm trying to handle the situation delicately. And I don't want to cause any alarm, but you are in my house at a strange hour, and I wasn't expecting any guests, so I am armed. And, you know, if I were to look in there... and If there's anything out of place, uh, whoever's in there is probably going to get hurt really bad. And I don't want that to happen. So let me ask you again, just to make sure, how many people are in there? And she said, it's just me, I swear. You can open the door if you want. Go ahead and open the door. And I heard some moving about and jostling about and inside the bathroom. And I was wondering if they were going to try the door. And I had position and I waited a moment. And she said, well, are you going to open the door and look? And I said, are you ready? And she said, yeah. And I said, okay. So with one arm, I pushed open the door and I grabbed my bat with both hands, fully prepared to bludgeon to death whoever was in there. And it was just her wearing a shirt holding her vagina with both hands, pulling it up so I can see it. Having her pants or shorts down around her ankles, totally naked. Her hair was all dirty blonde and messed up and probably had never been combed. She had blue eyes and She was a little chubby, but not not very chubby. The other interesting thing about her is that she had a shoestring tied around her wrist. And on the other end were lids from a convenience store around here called Quick Trip, strung through about three or four of them, all of different colors. And when I saw that, I pointed at it and I said, What's that? And she said, Those are my angels. They keep me company. They protect me. So I said, okay. I said, you are the only one here. 
and she said, yes. And I could tell nobody else was in the bathroom with her. The, the bathroom was very small, so... I said, well, thank you for being honest with me that you are indeed the only person in this room. But, uh, you know, I'd really hate to be rude, but, uh, you weren't invited here, and, uh, you know, it was kind of, uh, really disconcerting to have somebody I don't know in my house, and so I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. She said, oh, that's all right. I understand. I'm not, I don't want to be in any trouble. I was just really constipated. And then finally, I wasn't constipated anymore. So I, I came in here and I said, I know. That's, you already said that. We understand that. So, you know, why don't you just pull up your pants up? And then, you know, I'll, I'll let you out the front door. You don't have to go out the back. So she pulled her pants up and she walked out with me to the living room. And I kept a safe distance from her, trying to keep a distance away from her in case she tried to poke me with something and she started talking a lot she she was talking about being constipated and then it, it finally ending and then you know this is so great and then, you know she's sorry for for breaking in and and uh everything and then she asked me if i had uh, a dr pepper I said, no, I'm sorry. I've never been a fan of soda or pop or anything like that. And she looked over at a at a coffee pot of old coffee that had been sitting there all day, only about a cup's worth, and the light had been off and it was cold. And she said, well, what about that? And I said, I wouldn't really feel right about giving you that coffee. It's just been sitting there all day and everything. And, uh, you know, well, I don't really treat guests like that. And I didn't really invite you in. I I think honestly we should just kind of wrap this up. And she said, I don't mind. I'll take it. I really need something. I'm, I'm really thirsty. I'm really hungry. And I said, well, all right. So I hand her a little coffee cup and she takes the coffee pot and pours the coffee in it. And she said, do you have any sugar or anything? And I said, uh, I don't use a whole lot of sugar actually, but, uh, and then I spotted some and I said, well, here you go. And I opened the jar and I had a spoon in it and she shoveled four or five tablespoons in there. Then she starts telling me about her brother. She goes, yeah, I've been really worried about my brother. He was gone for the longest time, and then he came back, and then she's telling me the story. She's chugging this very sugary coffee. She's like, yeah, he's gone for a while, and then he just showed up one day, and then, you know, he just laid down on our dinner table, and he just, he fell asleep, and he, he hasn't woken up, and it's been about two weeks. I'm worried that he's dead. I said, how old's your brother? She said he was like in his 20s. And I said, well, where do you live? She goes, a few blocks from here that way. And I said, I tell you what, I'm not a doctor or anything, but... Uh, if you want, I'll be happy to take a look at your brother and, and I'll tell you if he's dead. How's that? And she said, no, that's okay. And handed me the cup of coffee and walked towards the front door and I unlocked the front door and walked her outside and she took off into the night in the direction that she said that she lived and just disappeared. I didn't mention this in that piece, which I produced a long time ago, but a few weeks later I was at my job and I went outside and I was smoking a cigarette and she jumped out of a bush. A bush started just dancing around and it was sort of like Three Amigos where the guy in the bush was talking to them and it just the bush is just shaking and I was wondering what the hell was going on. And then she popped out, she of all people. And she looked around, and she saw me, and she walked right over to me, and she asked me for a cigarette. And we talked for a minute, 
and I can't really remember what it was about, but I knew that she did not recognize me because the night that she was in my house, I was pretty much naked. And I know that um, I look much different with clothes on. And I had, a, you know, like a jacket and everything. And I talked to her for a minute, and then after a moment, she just skedaddled. And then I didn't see her for the longest time until that day when my coworker said that there was a 14-year-old boy passing out cigarettes. So then I saw her around here and there. And she was around a bit until some FBI agents from Chicago came and picked her up. I have no idea what she got up to. She had some seedy friends, but they were probably calling all the shots as far as I know because she's pretty goofy. And I'm pretty sure whatever she ended up getting up to was probably pretty ridiculous. Anyway, that's the special episode. Thanks for checking in. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at NonsensePassPod. The website's NonsensePassword.com. Email me at SpecialCharacter at NonsensePassword.com. Thanks for catching this episode. You will forever be cool. <laughs>